Hi, it's Greg Harrell again with another Vim screencast. Um, and I'm doing a series of these about sending email using Vim. Um, so in this one, I want to show you how to use Vim to view email. So you know, we often use Vim as an editor, but we can also use it as a viewer. Um, so at the moment in this particular uh, mailbox that I've got here, um, I want to look at this email. Um, I'm going to hit V. Um, it's going to show me the different um, kind of like multi-part parts that are encoded in the email. And uh, like I could open the HTML one, which is just going to show me the contents in a browser, which is not super exciting. Um, but in this case, I actually want to use Vim. So I'm going to open the plain text one and it opens in a split. Um, you'll notice that it is typed as file type mail. So this, the syntax highlighting and the wrapping should be just like as if I were composing a mail. But I can't edit this one because modifiers, modifiable is off. I don't actually want to edit these messages. I only want to view them. Um, so I'm going to show you a script that I made to do that. Uh, I just have to think what it's called. It's called something like view mail. Um, here it is. Um, basically, um, the meat of it is down here. Um, we're going to open Vim using the so-called view alias. This is just a link to the actual Vim executable. But when you open Vim using view, uh, it sets a few settings. Uh, that put it into a kind of a read-only mode. Um, but you can see basically what we're going to do here, we're going to set whatever encoding the email might be in, which might well actually hand over to us. Um, we're going to tell it that the file type is mail. We need to do that because it can't infer it from the extension. Um, we're going to turn off folding if for whatever reason folding was on um, and obviously set the no modifiable flag and then we're going to open the thing. Um, the somewhat interesting part here is that we have some specific behavior depending on whether or not we're in Tmux and specifically how big the screen is. Um, so if we're not in Tmux, in other words, if the Tmux variable is a zero width string, we're just going to open Vim and that's going to be fine. But if we are in Tmux, then on wide windows, we're going to do a vertical split so that the email will appear to the side of the, Vim, the, Vim, the Mutt client. Um, otherwise, we're going to do a, a horizontal split, which makes it appear below. So let's just look what happened here. Um, when I viewed this email, it because of the screen width, figured, okay, I'm gonna put this below. Um, but if I kind of trick this into thinking it's bigger by making the font smaller, um, if I open that again, it's gonna open it in a vertical split. So I can open multiple of these. Um, I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger again. I'm gonna just, oops, I'm just gonna get rid of the, I'm kind of a bit lost here. <laughs> Why did I try to save that file? Um, so basically, uh, because Vim was invoked in that way, as soon as you quit Vim, the splits go away, which is nice. Um, but let's make the screen a little bigger now. Yeah, so that's looking at email. Um, and it is important, I think, to have those split things set up because, as I mentioned in an earlier screencast, Mutt is single threaded. So just say you're looking at something and you realize you want to send a message to somebody else, you can't do it in the same instance um, unless you have forked into another split and you're looking at it in another split. Um, one other thing that I would note is that because MUT is um, operating on a so-called mailder uh, data structure um, locally on the hard drive, it's a structure that is designed for concurrent access. So if I want to start up another instance of MUT, I can do that quite easily. So I'm just going to open like another TMAC split here and type MUT and I'm in MUT and I can interact with these two things concurrently and nothing bad will happen. So uh, that's something to bear in mind.